Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, I appreciate it. In today's video, I wanna talk about managing uh, blown highlights in Luminar. There's a number of different ways you can do that, and um, I'll often employ more than one method on the same photo, depending on how bad it is. Um, now to be clear, you can't always recover everything, uh, but depending on the shot, you may be able to get something out of nothing, if you will. So let me start with this photo, and here it is. Uh, just a JPEG. Uh, now I shoot raw to be clear, but this is a JPEG. Um, as you can see, it's pretty well blown uh, in the highlights. This is from Prague. Uh, the skies is kind of a mess. Um, it's it's exposure three of a bracket set, and like another recent video, I'm taking the brightest one. And I'm trying to manage the highlights here just to talk about that. Um, here's my final result, and um, I obviously got a lot back in the sky, but I also got a lot of color I added, and I'll walk through that, and I did a number of other things, so I'll share that with you. Let me show you. Um, here we go. Um, there's three different filters, basically, that I would use to try to manage highlights. It would be the, the develop or raw develop, if you had a raw file, uh, tone, and polarizer. So they kind of do different things. Let me start with polarizer. If you go like that, basically, it's just reducing kind of the glare and some of the brightness in the brighter spots. But even at 100, it's not really doing everything. Like this section here doesn't look that great. And in fact, let me just turn this on so there you can see the result. That's actually a better way to do it. So there it is. You can see that it's blown out. The red, if you uh, highlight that triangle in the upper right corner of the histogram, shows you where all the blown out spots are. And the left corner is um, will give you blue dots. And the only ones that are showing up are on the back of this guy's pants. Uh, where it's that basically means it's completely black. Now, um, the uh, let's see here um, the the polarizer. That's where we were. I go like that, and and I manage it pretty well, really. Um, but I'm not going to do that in this one. Um, with develop filter, I would do a number of things. You can do a little bit with exposure, right? So that actually got rid of it. So now you've got your sky back. Um, I generally may or may not use exposure. I like to use the highlights. If you take a look at that, um, that took away that really well. And now I've got much more of a sky back. The further I go to the left with highlights, the more I get back, but the more faded I get. Um, it would be normal to see some highlights and to have them in your photo. Um, and uh, whites may help as well. And so you can kind of do that. So I usually do highlights and whites and sort of do a balance uh, between those things. Uh, let me reset that. I also like the tone filter, as I mentioned. It has highlights and whites as well, so you can do that with the highlights, and you can do that with the whites uh, to take them down, right? But it's also got Smart Tone, which I love. And so Smart Tone, uh, basically, if I'm going to the left to, to darken the photo, it'll only darken the bright spots. Um, and if I go to the right to brighten stuff, it's only gonna brighten the dark spots. The stuff that's already the opposite of what you want is gonna stay, if that makes any sense. So. Um, those are the three filters I would normally use. Now let me go ahead and jump into the photo. Um, and that's my end result. Whoops. Uh, that's my end result. So give me one second and then we'll dive into how I got there. One second. Okay, so here we are on the base layer. Now I did a few other things as you can see in the additional layers that I have and I'll cover that in a second. Um, I just did some, some basic adjustments in the develop tab or the develop filter. Um, and that was basically, I changed the tint a little bit. It was a little bit too green to my taste. Drop the exposure, added contrast. Now, um, let me see here, highlights and whites. I'm gonna take those back. Um, you can see where I was. Now, let me change the contrast back. Here it was. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna do exposure too. So there I am, right? I had the tint uh, adjusted. I took the exposure down a little bit. I was at like a negative 0.22 or something. Um, I added a lot of contrast. And as you can see what that's doing, it's, it's creating more contrast, which means the, the difference, if you will, between the, the uh, the, the brights and the darks is, is exaggerated. So I added a lot of contrast. It actually undid what I accomplished with the exposure filter, but that's okay. So now I go to highlights. I take this down. I took that down pretty significantly. Um, in fact, well past the point of getting to none of the red. So that was about negative 20. I think I was at like negative 90 or something, right? So there you go. I've got a much lighter, uh, or excuse me, much better sky. In fact, that sky's kind of just great the way it is. Um, but what I don't like about it is it doesn't really have enough white. I expect the sky to be a little bit brighter, so I want to bring some of that back. So I actually added a little bit in the whites, something like that, to create a little bit more realism, I guess, for a better word. Um, next, I went over here to Tone, and I stuck a number of different edits on there, as you can see. I uh, didn't do any contrast. I did a little bit of Smart Tone and Highlights. And that was really it. So let me show you the before 
and the after. Again, it just gave me a little bit more control over the sky, and that's what I like about Smart Tone. So I was basically done with the photo in terms of going from that, and if you remember the red swaths across the sky of the blown out highlights was pretty massive and exaggerated more so on the develop filter when I moved the contrast so high. But now I've got a fairly well balanced photo in terms of light. Um, and, and that's really it. I mean, that's the entirety of what I wanted to talk about primarily, which was how do you manage the highlights or the blown out parts of a photo? For me, it's, it's those three filters, develop and um, tone and polarizer. But in this case, I didn't use polar polarizer. I just used develop and tone. It got me where I wanted to be. Um, the only problem was I didn't really like the photo. Um, I like the idea of the photo. I didn't really like the colors and the tints and all that. I also didn't like all these people over here. And so I went and added a clone and stamp layer. And basically, if you just look on the bridge, let me turn that off again. There's the before. You can see there's a, some people here and some people there. And there's also this little thing in the water. Um, and the after, I got rid of all them with clone and stamp. Now, I did a video a while back about clone and stamp, and I'll put it in whichever corner it is. Um, if you want to click on that and watch it, it's really easy to use. You just got to be precise. And admittedly, if I zoomed in, you'd be like, eh, Jen, that's not exactly a smooth job. And that's true. Um, if I was going to try to print this large, uh, you'd be able to tell that I clone and stamped it. Um, most people are seeing this on a laptop or phone that's about this big. Um, and they're seeing it via social media, in which case, it's fine. No one's going to be able to tell. So depending on what you're doing with your photos, you can either hurry through it like I kind of did. It took me about 10 minutes, uh, or you can kind of take your time and get it right. I just chose expediency for the sake of the video. So that's clone a stamp. And then I went to this next layer. And basically, this is where I started playing with colors. And so I just started throwing things at it. I added some golden hour, gave it a little bit of warmth, which I liked. Um, I did a little color balance in the highlights, which gave it a little bit of pink tint. Um, which I love. It's creating more of a sunset look. So if you look at the base photo, unedited, it's kind of a blown out sky, not a lot of color, no contrast, and you know, kind of blah. Now, I think we're starting to get somewhere. In fact, I might should have stopped there, but being me, I, I didn't. Um, so I went to HSL and I took saturation down on a number of these things. So I mean, I just took them down because it was, it was a little too saturated, right? So before, which I'm starting to like now that I'm looking at it again, and after, I took it down a number of di different colors. I then added Accent AI, which gives a little bit of oomph and actually tends to bring back a little bit of color, just a little bit, right? So before and after Accent AI. Also, if you notice the sky, I think it's looking a little bit more um, interesting, I, I guess, right? So before AI and after. And uh, Accent, AI, Accent AI works pretty well on skies too. Um, then I brought back the tone filter. And I just said, well, I'm going to maybe darken this a little bit, added a little bit more contrast, took down smart tone and highlights again. I'm, again, I'm just, I continue to iterate on a photo and play with it and play with it until I get it about where I want it. Uh, Orton effect gave it a little bit of that moody kind of mystical drama where it kind of creates a little bit of shadow. Uh, and to me, there's en enough bright spots in the photo, like the line on the bridge, the sky and the water that adding the Orton effect sort of creates a little bit of contrast, a little bit of darkness in the other parts of the photo, which to me offsets them. Also makes the colors look a little bit better to me. So that's that. Um, then just happen happening to like saturation and vibrance, I went and added some back. Again, I iterate, I play with it, and I just tinker, for lack of a better word, until I get what I want. Uh, at this point, I said, all right, I need to wrap up the sky and wrap up the image, frankly. So. Um, I did a negative structure adjustment. So that's, you've seen me do this before. I go negative with the structure and boost it. So basically, instead of adding structure, which is a crunchiness, it kind of smooths it out. And then I painted it into the sky. So if I show you the mask here, you can see that I just kind of painted that into the sky. Uh, and that's what I did. So all it did is just kind of smooth out the clouds because um, I don't really like a lot of detail or um, uh, not shape, uh, just crunchiness to my to my clouds. I like them to be fairly smooth, kind of dreamy, almost kind of long exposure-y, like they're just kind of floating by and kind of blurring out. I just like that look in clouds for some reason. So I did that uh, with structure and I painted it in. Um, but then I also thought the saturation level of the sky was a little high, so I just went to structure and I went to mask and I said copy right there. Um, and then I added the saturation and vibrance filter um, and I made the adjustment to take saturation down, and then I just went in here and said mask, paste. Um, and pasting that mask just copies the same mask from the structure filter onto the 
saturation and vibrance filter. And it was basically a saturation reduction in the sky. So if you look at the sky, a little bit more saturated and after a little bit less saturated, it just was getting, you know, I'm not trying to fake a sunset. I just like color. Um, so I was trying to add a little bit of color to the sky through these other filters, but I think I went a little too heavy handed. So I took it back a little bit. Um, and then the last step was just doing the same thing, but on the rest of the photo. So I did another copy and paste of a mask and then I inverted the mask and did a negative saturation adjustment in the bottom of the photo, which is the opposite mask from the sky. So let me show you that, right? So it's basically that. It's just a copy and paste of the sky mask, and then you hit the invert button, and it, it flips it for you, and that's automatic, and that's all I did there. So that's uh, a number of different filters. Really, this uh, photo and this video was about managing the, the blown out highlights, which was, for me, develop filter and tone. But I continue to iterate, and I just thought I'd share with you that sort of thing, as well as the clone and stamp stuff. And that's really it, folks. You can pretty easily and quickly go from, you know, a photo like this, where you might look at it in your library and say, eh, it's kind of blown out. It, eh, ah, forget it. I'm not going to do it. I, I should have shot it better. Um, and you can turn it into something that maybe you like. Uh, now, you may not like that. And I got to admit, I'm kind of on the fence. Um, there are some things I like about it, but I don't love it. So I don't actually think I'm done with the photo. But for this video, I'll be done just so you can get on with your day. Um, but that's it. I mean, you know, if you pass these kind of photos that look like that in your library, don't hesitate to bring them into Luminar and do some experimentation. You can pull those highlights back pretty easily. Again, depending on the photo, I highly recommend doing this little trick with your histogram um, just to keep that uh, handy. And, uh, you know, I've got no blown out parts. I've got some dark parts, as you can see here, but I never worry about those. It's the blown out ones that I like to think more about. So um, that's it for today, my friends. I hope that you liked it. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, share with your friends, like it, and all that stuff. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.